Hello friends, macros and OpenTunes are a great way to group a number of OpenTunes effects together and show them as a single node in the FX schematic to go from this to this. And if you started to use the OpenTunes effects, you'll know how quickly they build up in a single scene. And macros can help you to simplify the view and they make adding effects quicker and they allow you to share groups of effects all with the same settings between scenes, projects and to share with your friends. It's like creating your own custom effect. So let's jump into OpenTunes and see how they work. So here's a scene with a drawing of Prince John I created recently on one of my weekly live streams. And you can catch these streams every Sunday afternoon and by hitting subscribe and clicking that bell means you'll be notified of when I next stream. And I'd love to see you there to join me doing some drawing and animating in OpenTunes. So, on the stream, I drew Prince John, as you can see here, with these flat colours. And since then, I've added shadows and highlights, which are shown with the effects, to make him stand out better and just look more complete. And I use the effects to make the shadows blur a little and the highlights glow a little. So, if I come out of the full screen mode of this, and then go to a room with a schematic panel in it, so the schematic uh, room has that and be sure you're on the FX view so just click the button at the bottom right to change between the stage schematic and the FX schematic and here you can see just how many effects I use to create this image it's been quite a few and I'll make a separate video about these explaining exactly what all of these nodes do and when I do I'll add a link to a card up here and I'll add it to the description down below so now that I've set up the effects for this character, I might want to use the same settings for another character or a prop, either in this scene or in a different one. And once you're happy with their settings, we can simplify the view by turning them into a macro, which will make it easier to use. So to do that, you highlight the effects nodes, and not the column nodes or the X sheet, and then you right click and choose make macro fx and this now shows all of those nodes as a single node and all of the inputs that were used for the contained nodes are now shown as inputs into this macro but do stay tuned to the end for a top tip to make these much much clearer and although you'd normally set up your effects node settings before turning them into a macro once they are in a macro like this you can still change them just double click on the macro to pop up the effects settings or as I've got here I've got them docked just behind me at the bottom right of the screen here and now you see a tab for each of the settings in that macro so you can still change their values and the macro is shown here as a single node but if you want to see what effects are inside this you can still open it just right click on the macro and choose open macro effects which now shows all of the effects nodes in a single box that you can move and manipulate as a single unit. And you can still adjust each of these nodes to make them easier to see. And then move them around to where is useful on the FX schematic. And then if you want to close it, you just press the X in the corner and it reduces down to a single node again, which makes the schematic much, much clearer. And if you change your mind about using this macro, you can break out those FX nodes again by just right clicking on it and choosing Explode Macro FX. And now you've got each of the separate nodes shown on screen. You can add more nodes, adjust them, and then collapse them down into another macro effect if you prefer. But let's group them back into a macro again. So again, we'll select and highlight over all of those nodes, right click and choose make macro effects so now i've got a single macro effect there so that's great for making the schematic look much much more simple but if you've got a second character in the scene you can reuse this macro by using the normal copy and paste option so select the node press ctrl c click away from the node to deselect it and then press ctrl v and you'll now have a copy of that macro that you can connect in with some more columns and again, the settings are shown on the right hand side here, so you can adjust them separately for this other set of columns using this macro. 
Or if you want to share the settings between the macros, you can use the linked effects as I showed you last week. So if I just delete this copied macro, to create a linked macro, you just right click on the macro and choose create linked FX. And now you've got a duplicate of that macro that you can plug other columns into. And if you change the settings for either of the two macros, it changes for both of them as they're now linked. So that's how you use the macro in the same scene, which keeps the schematic view very much more simple. And it's really useful for using and sharing the same settings between different columns. But what about using this macro in another scene? Well, once you've set up and created this macro, simply right click on it and choose save as preset and then enter a name and click save. And this saves the macro as a file on disk. And now you can add this macro to any scene in the same way as you'd add an effect. You simply right click in the schematic, choose add effects, and now you'll see this new macro section. And in there, you can choose your macro that you've just created, shadows and highlights. And it appears as it does for any effect on the schematic. And this macro, of course, contains all of the effect nodes and all of the settings that we've set up for this macro. And if you want to delete the macro or share it with friends, you can find it on disk here in your OpenTune stuff folder within FX, Presets, and in the new folder called Macro Effects. So you can simply share this with a friend and they can copy it into their OpenTune stuff folder and then they can use the same macro. And once you start creating macros, you'll find you have multiple inputs of the same column into the macro effect, which can get confusing to know which column you should plug into which input. So as you can see here, the shadows column is plugged into one single input, the character is plugged into three inputs, and the highlights are plugged into two. And the input names aren't very clear, showing which column should be plugged in. So as I said earlier, we can simplify these inputs, so let's do that now. And all of the inputs for all of the effects are shown by default, and are shown with the effect node name in the list here. But to use them easier, really, these should be named after the column type that you have to plug in. So let's do that. So first, let's explode this macro to get to each individual effect node. So right click and choose Explode Macro Effects. If we make this full screen, it will be easier to work with so I can make it larger. So, for each type of input, and we've got three types for the three columns, we'll add what's called a pass-through node. So simply right-click in the schematic, and from Add Effects, go down to Utility and choose Pass-through. And we'll add three of these. So again, I use Copy and Paste. So with the first one selected, I press Control c I click away, and then I press Control v to create a second one, click away, control V again, and I've now got three of these. So just double click on each one and name them after the input type. So the top one I'll call shadows. The next one is for the character. Of course, this is the character or prop or piece of background or whatever you want to apply the shadows to. And the bottom one is highlights and these are shown slightly different to the effects nodes as a smaller box with one input and one output although you can plug in multiple outputs which we'll see in a second so looking where each column is plugged into the effect we just need to plug the column into the appropriate pass-through node and then connect the pass-through node into those effects and if the column was plugged into multiple nodes we plug backwards from the effect into this pass-through node. So we'll plug the shadows that is into the transparency column here. We'll plug that into the shadows pass-through node. Then plug from the shadows pass-through node into the transparency. And to keep that simple, let's bring that to the bottom to help organize this. We'll put the highlights at the top here. So again, plug the highlights column, which was going into the light and source inputs of glow plug that into the highlights node then the highlights node into one of these inputs light and because we can't plug a second one from highlights into the effect 
we can go backwards by clicking on the source of glow and dragging that towards the end connection of highlights and you see it snap into place. So now that's plugged into both of those. And the same for the character. We connect the character into the character pass through node. Note that's plugged into the matte effects here and into source three of the over effect on the end. So we'll connect that into the character, character into the mat, backwards from the second mat into the character, the same from source three. And that's now connected in the same place as the previous column node was connected before. So now I want to make a macro of these effects. We'll click and drag over the three pass-through nodes as well as the effects. With all of them selected, right-click and choose Make Macro. And now you see you've got a single macro node with fewer inputs going into this macro and each column only plugged in once. But there is one extra column showing here, which is the over effects. So if I explode this again, and we'll see exactly why that is. Let's move those out of the way and bring this back so we can see the effects a bit more clear. And we've got a spare input showing on the macro because the over effects node can have an infinite number of inputs. So when you plug some inputs in, you'll always have a spare one and any open inputs are always shown on the macro. So I'll replace this over effects node with a different set of nodes. So let me show you that briefly. So I'll add in the layer blending INO, the overlay INO, and that'll have a foreground and a background. And I want the highlights to go in the foreground and the character to go in the background. So I'll drag from the effect back to the pass through node. I'll delete the connection into the over effects for these two. And let's delete the over effect node altogether. And now I'll copy the overlay INO node Make sure that's plugged back in. There we go. So I'll create another one of the overlay INO nodes. So I'll press Control C on the effect, click away, Control V, and I'll use that input as the background and place the shadows as the foreground. And I can connect that into the X sheet. And now there are no spare inputs, but I've still got the highlights in front of the background, uh, the background character and the shadows also in front of the background character. So you can see that once you start using the effects, it's really easy to have so many added into your schematic. These macros really will simplify the view of the schematic. So again, let's select and drag over all of the effects here, right click and choose make macro effect. And now the macro only has three inputs and it's really simply labeled as the character the shadows and the highlights. And this makes your schematic much, much clearer to look at and work with any future effects. So that's a quick run through of the macro feature. And in my opinion, it's a really underused feature that'll save you time and offer you consistency in your effects. And I'd like to say thanks to all my lovely supporters over on Patreon, with special thanks to Maria and Robert. Your support really helps everything I do here on the channel. And I do hope you're enjoying the additional content and benefits you're getting from being a supporter, including early access to my videos, a download of this project, and the macro that I used in this project, so you can use it on your own projects. And if you want to know more about macros, then check out this video just here. And to see a breakdown of the effects I've used in this project, then check out this video just here. I know you'll find them both really useful. And that's a guarantee.